almost kind of like a family reunion. It is a little bit, isn't it? It's great to be here with my um, with my uncle AB and uh, and then my cousin AB and uh, you know my the, the older uncle AB. I, I had two uncle ABs and a cousin AB. The oldest uncle AB is now deceased, but he ran the uh, Young and Conway Seed business in Northfield, Kentucky, or Home County's Union County. And my uncle AB, who's my dad's younger brother, moved over here to King County Attorney and stayed in Ohio County uh, for most of his life. So it, it definitely feels like a home calling, and um, it's great to be here. You know, I've got uh, my in-laws live in Owensboro. Uh, my family's home county on my dad's side is Union, and I've got a lot of family here in Ohio. So hopefully this state will turn out big for us uh, here in 47 days, and when I'm the next governor of the Commonwealth of Kentucky, I'm certainly going to remember Ohio County and all of this part of the state. Speaking in this part of the state, uh, a lot of talk is about coal, coal, coal. And at some point in time in the future, you know, coal's not going to be as prevalent as it is. We're going to have to think about other ways of uh, making an economic impact. One of the ways that we're, do, we're doing that here in Ohio County is we've applied for a trail town status along the Rough River and Hartford. And I guess I'm just wanting your thoughts on adventure tourism in the state going forward, or tourism as a whole. Well, I, I support adventure tourism. I think having a designation as a trail town here might be great. Uh, you've got a lot of recreational opportunities with the lakes and hunting here in western Kentucky. It's one of the reasons I love western Kentucky so much. Uh, look, on the coal issue, let me say this. Western Kentucky coal is doing better than eastern Kentucky. And uh, what you need out of the next government is actually something that can market coal. And the coal, is, coal mining is very important. I'm going to support them. The only Democratic attorney general in the country who's actually sued the EPA to stand up for Kentucky's coal industry. And I did it because of, number one, the mining jobs, but secondly, the low cost of electricity that's a result of coal uh, is a real economic development advantage. So we use our low cost of electricity to bring jobs to the state, to bring auto manufacturing jobs, to bring minerals to bring jobs, to bring steel jobs to a state like Kentucky. So you need a governor, regardless of party, who's going to stand up for the coal industry and stand up for tourism. Um, we, we, we should see a boom in tourism in Kentucky. We, we see three quarters of a million people just this year coming to the bourbon trail. You know, there's more we can do. There's more we can do in Western Kentucky for recreation. So uh, I would certainly be supportive of it. And given my connections here to Ohio County, I would certainly do anything I could as governor to make sure the next tourism secretary promotes this part of the state. Well, not only Trail Town, we'd also the home of Bluegrass. That's right. Not Bill far from Bill, Bill, Bill and Rose River. Just right. Right. right up the road there. Yeah. Uh, you were in a debate just last night. Uh, this was the first debate, I believe, with uh, independent candidate Drew Curtis. Uh, give me your thoughts on it now being seemingly a three-man race and, and how you think you did last night. Well, I think it did well. You know, there were a lot of people trying to talk about distractions last night. You know, what a governor does is a governor focuses on education and job creation. That's really what a governor does. And I was the one up there last night talking about early childhood education, making certain our kids are ready for kindergarten. I was talking a lot about you know, students get to meet juniors and seniors. How do they prepare for the jobs in the future? Uh, are we doing enough in workforce development to, to, to have skills development in this state? Uh, I was talking a lot about job creation. You know, I've got an opponent who doesn't believe in economic development. So when he said that on the record. So when you focus on what a governor really does, uh, I think I was the one person on the stage uh, last night who was really talking about this. My cousin was telling me a story. Well, he can We were talking about St. Louis Park. As uh, Ohio County Judge Executive, uh, and you as uh, Kentucky's uh, Attorney General, I want to very much welcome you to Ohio County. Uh, You've got relatives here and a lot of friends, and uh, we're very proud of you and really glad to have you here. Uh, this certificate says a key to the county. Hey. From Ohio County, Kentucky, home of bluegrass music. Uh, and, and it has a picture of a mandolin on it, and it's signed by me, David Johnson. So we would like for you to have this and to uh, to remember the folks in Ohio County. <laughs> 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 
Well, as the Attorney General of Kentucky, there better not be a key to that ballot box. It better be electronically tabulated. Well, that's to any road in Ohio County you get here. So I, I, if I get pulled over in this this year? Yes. Okay, that'll work. Thank you. <laughs> but again, we're very proud to have you here today. Thank you. Uh, in just a moment, I want to, uh, I'm going to ask uh, Representative Tommy Thompson to introduce uh, to introduce Jack. Uh, before I go there, I, I want to thank uh, all the people that have come out at lunch today. I know that that is not always the best time for everybody, but uh, we pretty well have filled up the uh, the chairs. Uh, I want to thank the elected officials that that have come. Each one of you, uh, there's a number of you here, so I think it probably take a little too long to uh, to recognize uh, each and every one of you. I want to thank Senator Boswell uh, for, for, for coming over. I want to thank all the people that have worked to put this on, all the people that have served the food, the drinks. Um, uh, we're very appreciative of that. Uh, I would ask at this point in time that Representative Thompson come forward. Amy, thank you. Good afternoon. It's certainly a, a pleasure to be here. And, you know, it's amazing the crowd that you can assemble when A.B. Conway offers free legal services for a month. <laughs> for anybody that will come today. Uh, no. But uh, before I have just a very few comments about a good friend and an outstanding public servant, Jack, I just want you to know that we're in the presence of a lot of people here that not only are very passionate about where they live and their community, but they're very concerned about the future direction of our state. But just quickly, uh, you know, I think uh, we're really at an inflection point here in Kentucky. And we've got a governor's race in November that's critically important to the future direction of our state. And are we going to continue the progress that we made under this current administration, or are we going to regress and go into neutral? And the choice could never be more clear, in my opinion, Charlotte. We've got someone who has proven leadership skills and abilities. He's not only been a tremendous advocate for the citizens of Kentucky, uh, but he's been a tremendous and devoted public servant. Jack, it's, it's incredible what he's done for this state, whether you talk about cybersecurity and trying to defend our young people against those that would abuse them, uh, whether he's gone after the big tobacco companies and secured monies that Kentucky needed to continue diversification in agriculture or things for early childhood development or medical purposes. Uh, he recently won a huge award from a private college that had been out defrauding the students that they were there to serve. That's the type of servant that we have with Jack Conway. And you know, you learn a lot about a person, David, when you work with them. And I've had the privilege, because of you all, to be in the General Assembly for a number of years. And I've worked firsthand with Jack. And I've seen what he can do and the policy experience that he has and can bring to the table. We worked back in 2008. You remember, Shannon, we had that horrible ice storm. And what did a lot of vendors do after that? They started praying on Kentuckians. They raised and tripled and quadrupled the price of everything from brooms to shovels to generators. Jack immediately took steps to pass legislation to prevent that, and he's gone after many companies that have preyed upon our citizens and taken advantage of them. That's the kind of person that he is. And on the other side, the choice is someone who, first of all, wants to dismantle a health care system in Kentucky that's added 500,000 people to the roles of having health care for the first time. And what's wrong with having a healthier Kentucky? and a healthier economy. We're the 45th least healthy state in the country. And to have people for the first time have access to health care and a doctor and preventive care, that's what Jack will continue. That's what his, one, his opponent wants to destroy. He has an opponent that doesn't want to invest in early childhood education, told him that. What could be more important than invest in our young people? Jack understands that, has always supported it. His opponent is against it. And then we have his opponent that wants to tear down Kentucky's assessment system that has led to us having more kids being college and career ready than we've ever had before because of the new Common Core curricula that we've adopted in Kentucky that Jack has endorsed. So 
I just wanted to quickly say that the choice couldn't be more clear in terms of who we can pick to lead this state for the next eight years. I'm confident that we've got in Jack Conway somebody that has the best plan and the best vision for the future of Kentucky can make this a place that we can continue to call home and can make this a place that we're all proud of. So please join me in welcoming a good friend, an outstanding public servant, somebody that will make Kentucky proud, the next governor of the Commonwealth of Kentucky, Jack Conway. Thank you, Tommy, for that kind introduction. Tommy, you've been an awfully good friend over the years, and uh, I appreciate that kind introduction very much. It was um, it was really heartwarming to see my uncle A.B. Uh, get up here and uh, give such a touching uh, story of, of my roots and my connection to Western Kentucky. I, you know, I saw him look at my dad and said, you're going to need an extra napkin, I'm going to make you cry. Heck, he made me cry. I had to go over and get a napkin myself. <laughs> Uh, we Conways have one genetic defect, and as I get older, and it happens only, it happens as you age and as you get to be an older male in the Conway family, you discover that your kidneys are located right behind your eyeballs. <laughs> and so um, I'm starting to learn that, Uncle A.B., but thank you for that, uh, that touching tribute. I, um, I'm so glad to have my dad here with me today. He's, uh, you know, I, 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 he has molded and shaped me and helped me in so many ways. And... Um, and my uncle A.B. is someone I love very much. I, uh, you know, I, I was seeing my cousin A.B. over here and talking about Nani and Papa. I remember when we used to play D football back in the uh, back in the living room there, Nani and Papa's house. I would we would go eight or ten times a year down to Union County to see my grandparents, and so um, I spent a lot of time down here. And, and one of the things my uncle A.B. would do that was so special was he would come to Louisville and pick me up, probably between the ages of about maybe eight and nine, about fifteen. He'd come pick me up. And, and Uncle A.B. and I and my cousin A.B. would go over to St. Louis for a Cardinals baseball weekend every summer. We did it every summer. And uh, my dad brought me up, taking me out in the back porch and turning on Camo X and brought me up with Luke Rock and Bob Forsh. And then Uncle A.B. really cemented it by making certain we had one St. Louis Cardinals baseball weekend uh, every summer. So, uh, you know, those, it's hard to believe those days were 35 years ago. We played 20 questions all along the way. Uh, A.B. would always come up with some obscure Dallas Cowboy that none of us had ever heard of to actually win the game with 20 questions at the end. But uh, um, I love Uncle A.B. very much. He, uh, and, uh, and whenever I get on the phone with him, I always say, uh, how are Cardinals doing? And Pittsburgh's getting close to us here. They're scaring me to death right now. But uh, I'm a rabid St. Louis Cardinals baseball fan because of that guy right there. And so, Beth, thank you for helping out here today. Justin, it's great to see you. Uh, and thanks for all of you for turning out here today. And when you leave here, don't leave these signs in here because they don't do any good in this building. So uh, take a sign, find a location, and uh, make certain you let people know how important this election is because it's only 47 days away. I mean, folks, we're 47 days away from selecting the next governor and lieutenant governor of the Commonwealth of Kentucky. It's here. It is on us. And I pop out of bed every morning because for me, this race isn't a want to. This race is a have to. I mean, if you care about public education in Kentucky, this race is a have to. If you care about economic development, creating jobs in the future, uh, this race is a have to. Judge, if you care about making certain we have a road fund that can actually help you out with your rural roads and with flux program for bridges and 80-20 program, this race, is a, this race is a have to. And when you get in the late stages of a campaign, and I've been through several now, uh, you start to realize toward the end that it's, it's sort of like you're giving something up. You know, this race really is starting to become in your hands. And so when I ask you to support me as hard as you can over the next 47 days, I don't want you to do it for me. I'm just the name on that sign. I'm just the name on the ballot. Do it for you. Do it for the future of this little boy right here. Do it for the type of Ohio County that you want for the future. Do it for what you see and what you feel you need. That's why you ought to do it. Folks, you know, I'm running a campaign to try to make it right. I am. We're crisscrossing the state. When I say we, I'm talking about me and my running mate, Sandy Overly. I don't know how many of you know Sandy. Obviously, Tommy serves with her in the legislature. You know, you know Sandy. Folks, I've got a great running mate. And please watch the lieutenant governor debates coming up. She's going to show you her stuff. Uh, Sandy was born and raised on a family farm in Bourbon County. Uh, she became a civil engineer and actually went to work in the transportation cabinet. And then, like my father, she put herself through law school at night at the University of Louisville. 
She returned to Bergen County, started a law practice, got elected to the legislature, quickly became the budget subcommittee chair for transportation. Well, she knows a lot about transportation, Judge. And, uh, and then Sandy became the first woman, the first woman in Kentucky history elected to House Leadership. So I often say I'd like my two little girls to grow up to be like my wife, but if they grew up to be like Sandy, I'd be a proud papa. I tell you that. I tell you that. And uh, we're talking about all the things that I think are important to Kentuckians. We're talking a lot about economic development, Tommy, creating the good paying jobs of the future. But folks, there's a big distinction in this race. We actually have an opponent who said he doesn't believe in economic development in I would ask, how the heck did Toyota get to Georgetown? You know, how the heck did uh, how the heck did UPS expand in Louisville? How the heck did we create 10,000 jobs in the last year alone? Sandy and I, when we're elected, we want to create an office of small business advocacy in the governor's office because too often the only time I hear from small businesses, or when they've got a licensing issue, or when an inspector is pointing something out, uh, we need to have a culture change. You know, if they want to grow, they ought to be able to grow. They create 90 percent of our jobs. Uh, we need to be friendlier to small businesses in Frankfurt. Folks, the next Workforce Development Secretary is going to be just as important as the Economic Development Secretary. We've got a skills gap in this state, folks. If you go to the, the four clients in Louisville right now, they can only find one-third of the skilled electricians at $27 an hour that they need to complete that expansion. I was over in Henderson County a few months ago with a friend of mine who's a Republican judge. He's part of Republicans for Conway. He's, uh, his name is Daryl Littrell. He's the CEO of Sunrise Tool and Die. That Tool and Die shop, they're making molds for auto parts. And they're also making the molds for the faces of Whirlpool washers and dryers. It's advanced manufacturing. He's paying his employees $100,000 a year. He's got 50 employees. He's running that facility 24-7 in three shifts. He's looking for 50 more employees and can't find them. Can't find them. But folks, we could go to Eastern Kentucky right now and we start driving through counties that have 20% unemployment. This is a big conversation. It's something we have to get right. It involves the workforce development cabinet. It involves our community and technical schools. But we've got to make certain we close this skills gap in the state. Sandy and I are talking a lot about infrastructure, Judge. Roads and bridges, which are very important. We're also talking about the infrastructure of the 21st century, which is broadband, high-speed internet access. I bet there are places in Ohio County where it's really tough to get broadband in. Am I not right? Amen. We are 47th in the country in broadband access. My running mate Sandy sent me an email a few months ago. She sent it at about 2 in the morning, such as the nature of running for governor, lieutenant governor. I, my wife looked across the bed and she said, who are you emailing? I said, Jake from State Farm. <laughs> <laughs> True story. Um, but Sandy had sent me an, an article from the Washington Post. And the article had taken a look at the broadband speeds of all 50 states, and they had us 50. Folks, what that means is if I'm your governor next year, when I'm your governor next year, and I'm trying to bring jobs to Western Kentucky, they're not coming if we don't have basic connectivity. Now, Governor Bashir has started a process to begin to build this out. He's doing it through a public-private partnership. But Tommy, you know this. We've got an opponent who doesn't believe in public-private partnerships. It would effectively end this program if you were elected governor. Sandy and I believe, and my wife wants to make her signature issue when we're elected, that early childhood education is tremendously important. The child that is ready for kindergarten will test well in the third grade, sixth grade, they want to be college and career ready. It's just that important. But we have an opponent who's gone on statewide TV now and said that early childhood education serves no purpose and the kids forget it all by the age of nine. Folks, those are his words. His plan for public education is a pure voucher system. He thinks you just give money to parents and let them use it at public schools, private schools, or for homeschooling. He would decimate. He would decimate public education in this state. So, folks, this is a big election. There are many things at stake here in 47 days. And the good news is that we're up. It's a close race. And from what I've seen, we, I saw a poll this week. We've got a five-point lead. Uh, I want it to be bigger, but it's a close race, and we're really going to need you over these next 47 days. But the good, good news is, Judge, we've got a lot of Republicans coming on board. Judge, your counterpart, the Republican County Judge down in Monroe County, is the chair of Republicans for Conway. The judge in Jamie Comer's home county is chair of Republicans for Conway. We've got business leaders uh, like Bill Samuels, like Matt Thorne, and others who chair Republican business leaders for Conway. Because they know that this election is a choice between the mainstream and the extra. That's really what it is. And they want a Frankfurt that works for them. Now, folks, 
there are a few Republicans out there who are trying to pull one over on the people of Kentucky. I mean, the guy I'm running against ran in a primary against Mitch McConnell last year, and then he wouldn't endorse him. And what have the Republicans been saying about him over the last year and a half? They called him an East Coast con man. They called him a pathological liar. They said he was the number one tax cheat in Connecticut. Heck, Mitch McConnell's own chief of staff just this spring said that uh, if Matt Bevin were elected governor, his only agenda would be commissioning his own self-portrait. I mean, their words, Republican words, not mine. Now there are a few Republicans who want you to believe that the primary is over and he's somehow now been magically rehabilitated. He's ready to be the governor of Kentucky. Well, I believe in recycling, but give me a break. I mean, so this is a big choice. It's a choice between the mainstream and the extreme. Someone like him or someone like me, I came in front of you seven and a half years ago as a candidate for attorney general. I said, look, we've got a terrible problem with prescription pill abuse. We've got too many kids getting solicited online. And the civil side of the office is underutilized. And here we are two terms later. We've shut down half the pain clinics in this state. I reached across the aisle and worked with the Republican Attorney General of Florida, and we stopped the flow of pills coming from that state. And for the first time in a generation, folks, we see the number of prescriptions for OxyContin and hydrocodone going down. We created a cyber crimes unit that's a national model. We've taken 800,000 child porn images off of the internet. We have a 100% conviction rate. And heck, Jason, we even cracked the Pappy Van Winkle case a few months ago, okay? So we're doing some awfully good work. We're doing some awfully good work. On the civil side of the office, look, I've, I've gone after the banks that wrongfully foreclosed on people, the pharmaceutical companies that lied to the Medicaid program. We have civil collections up over 600%. We've returned over $300 million to the state treasury. For every dollar the General Assembly has given me, Tom May, we've returned four to the state treasury. And we've done this while cutting our office's budget by 40%. So, folks, I've been fiscally responsible. I'm a good steward of taxpayer dollars. <laughs> I am. And when I saw the tobacco payment, which attorney generals won over 15 years ago, when I saw the tobacco payment was in jeopardy, I got on a plane and went and saved the tobacco payment. We got the full tobacco payment, half of which goes to agricultural diversification. And we got 60 million additional dollars too as a result of that settlement. So I've stood by agriculture and I understand how important that is. I've been good on sportsmen's issues and have always stood up for sportsmen's rights and for the second amendment. I've been the national AG chair uh, amongst the AGs on veterans issues. And heck, I've even taken on my own party when it was the right thing to do. You're looking at the only Democratic Attorney General in the country who actually sued the EPA because I think the EPA has overreached its authority and has unfairly targeted coal producing states like Kentucky, which happen to have low electricity rates. Folks, we use our electricity rates to lure aluminum smelters or steel companies or auto companies here. And the EPA has disproportionately target, targeted Kentucky in, a, in, in our coal producing. And I have stood up for Kentucky. We won a lawsuit in the Supreme Court here recently. And I'm going to stand up for Kentucky because I put people over politics and I will always put this common law first. <laughs> there are 47 days to go until an incredibly important election. And we need your help. Take the yard sign. Take one of these big signs and place it in a prominent place. Talk up the fact that I've got roots in Western Kentucky. Uh, talk about the fact that you know I understand Kentucky's values. Now, I understand this state. I've delivered for this state. I've got a plan for the state. Go to ConwayOverly.com. Check out our education plan. Check out our jobs plan. And uh, I'm just honored to be here. And I'll wrap up by saying two words that people in public life don't say often enough. And that's thank you. Thank you. If you'll have my back. If you'll have my back for the next 47 days, I will have the back of Ohio County for the next term as governor. Thank you very much. We've got time for a question or a comment if anyone's got a quick one. Dollar, 81% goes to long-term care. Mm -hmm. 
think we've got to, I'm going to look at that from a budgeting standpoint. Um, if we can if we can keep people in home longer, that is, number one, better for care, number two, better for the budget. And I certainly understand that. And so on health care, look, you know, there are a lot of different opinions over the way health care was done. But I think what we've shown in Kentucky is if we do health care reform, Tommy, the Kentucky way, we can put the rhetoric aside and do it right. And so if we get six years down the road and we can't afford something or can't afford something, we can always recalibrate. But folks, we have an opponent who has been very clear that on day one, he would undo everything Steve Bashir has done. And what he would in effect do is he would kick a half million people off of health insurance. On day one of his administration. Folks, those are your fellow parishioners. Those are your neighbors. Those are the people you attend school with. Those are your fellow Kentuckians. And he'd kick a half million people off of health insurance. I think that's callous. Yes, ma'am. You're looking at 120 plus years of senior services right here. And Tommy's and David have both seen it, that it is much less expensive to put money in the budget for senior services, for in home deals, congregate deals, and in home services to keep people at home. Yet our budgets were cut every year. Those budgets need to be readjusted where they can, we can keep these people at home for in home deals, in home services, and congregate deals. Because nursing homes and and in home service, nursing homes are much more expensive. Sure. So you have my I will you have my word I will take a look at that uh, very closely when we're putting together our next budget and um, obviously the next budget gets presented in January of next year and I will certainly look at that I am well aware that, that in home services are, 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 are cheaper and typically better better for the uh, the individual involved and so I understand that. And uh, look, as Attorney General, one other thing I've done, um, we've increased elder abuse prosecutions by 300%. And so I, I hope you're aware of that too. Yes, sir. I have a question. Uh, recently, there's been some high package of avian flu that's hit some of the other states. Uh, Kentucky, Kentucky, avian flu? Yeah, the high package of uh, Kentucky has about 7,000 people in the poultry industry working. In this county alone, we have about $44 million payroll. So what will you do to protect us against the uh, avian flu? Will you focus on this as an agriculture issue? Well, you know, I want to support the poultry industry and make certain we're doing everything we can to keep the jobs here. Uh, but if there's a need for the, the Cabinet for Health and Family Services to come down here or our public health departments to do more to make sure the population is protected, uh, we will certainly be down here and do everything we can. That, that was avian flu that affects the poultry, what yeah. I was getting at. Uh, yeah. But, but it affects the poultry industry. The chickens themselves, mm -hmm. if they get it, but it's spread by uh, wild, wildfowl, like mm -hmm. Canadian geese, things sure. like that, through the flyways. Uh, I guess my question is pointed toward what can the governor's office, or what would you be willing to do as far as uh, transportation of poultry from out of state coming in the state, things of that nature that would protect the industry to keep that avian flu from getting inside the poultry houses here from other wildfowl. Well, it sounds to me like it's a it's a, it's a testing issue for the uh, uh, the Energy and Environment Cabinet is in charge of that sort of stuff. Uh, it sounds like we need to have a potentially a stronger testing regime to make certain that we're doing that. It sounds like we also need to be testing uh, some of the uh, some of the, the wildlife here. If, uh, that's, that's really a uh, fish and wildlife issue. So we have to pull those two, uh, those two cabinets and entities together to come up with a strategic plan to make certain we're not importing disease. And it's certainly if I'm like the governor, and if that becomes a pressing issue, it's something I'll tackle immediately. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. We're proud of you, you hang in there and make up proud. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you.